Today's reflective reading comes from my own writings on humanism when I researched the life of Ernestine Rose. It's called Rebel at the Age of Five, the life of Ernestine Rose, mistress of herself. Ernestine Rose was a force aiming to govern herself, her thoughts, her world, in a time when most women were not expected to even think. Ernestine was born in Congress, Poland, as Ernestine Louise Potowska and lived from January 13, 1810 to August 4, 1892. So this is a story from quite a while ago. Ernestine understood that all human rights issues are independent. For her, slavery, women's rights, and religious freedom were all intertwined. She could find no science nor reason to justify oppression. One could not expect our world to function well if half the races, half the genders, and all of her humanity were ruled by anything other than logic, she said. As an early humanist, atheist, suffragette, women's rights pioneer, abolitionist, and public health advocate, her life provides lessons for us today. Ernestine began her work when she was very young, while many women's rights advocates began their justice work speaking out against slavery, Ernestine began by questioning religious rule in her own home. She was five years old when she asked her father, a rabbi, why this God, why his God, would ask him to participate in painful fast. He told her women, let alone little girls, shouldn't question religion, nor authority, and that women and girls had no business thinking for themselves. He told her, a young girl does not want to understand the object of her creed, but to accept and believe it. I was a rebel at the age of five, she said. Ernestine began to question the justice of a God who would exact such hardships. She even wanted to rule her own destiny. The only religion she considered at all was universalism, but even that was hard for her to ascribe to until all had human equal rights. Ernestine's mistrust of illogical rules and laws was further confirmed when she was 16 and her mother died, leaving Ernestine an inheritance she could not keep because she was a woman. Her father was a wealthy rabbi, but the family wealth came from Ernestine's mom. Her father arranged for her to marry someone she didn't even know or care for, and after begging him to stop the arrangement, he told Ernestine this is how families keep their wealth. He thought she was silly to want to marry for love and didn't understand the function of marriage in society, nor the imperative to keep her wealth in the family. Ernestine did something very unusual and traveled to a secular court in harsh weather conditions and argued on her own behalf. The court ruled in Ernestine's favor. She did not have to marry the man her father chose. She wanted to travel the world to find true love and be independent. While the court ruled that Ernestine could keep her inheritance, she returned home to discover that her father had remarried a girl her own age. Her home environment proved trying, so she let her father keep most of the money, and she moved to Berlin. In Germany, she discovered there were anti-Semitic laws requiring all Jews to have sponsors. Seeing this as untenable, Ernestine appealed to the king, who was so taken with her tenacity and logical arguments that he let her stay in Germany without a sponsor. To support herself, she invented and sold perfumed shelf lining papers a special scented paper to mask the foul odors in the home. This business she started funded her travels. In her early 20s, Ernestine was exposed to Owenism, and she was so taken with its ideas and the founder that she started lecturing on radical ideas like free education for all and women's rights to own property, have bank accounts, and choose who to marry. She saw that all races were equal, stating, emancipation from every kind of bondage is my principle. 
I go for recognition of human rights without distinction of sect, party, sex, or color. She encouraged others to speak out for human rights. Rose said, silence is consent, and silence where life and liberty is at stake, where by a timely protest we could stay at the destroyer's hand and do not do so is criminal and as criminal as actually giving aid to the oppressor for it answers his purpose.